filmed them in my room in a while. Also, I'm so sorry about that blue filter I put in my previous videos. My new computer screen was showing everything to be super orange and I put a blue filter and then I looked at it on my other computer and it looked like crap, so that's, that's the excuse. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Money Reads and today I want to try to do a vlog. I'm not sure if this is even going to see the light of day because I really suck at doing vlogs. I wish I was better at them and I used to be but I don't know, I think there's something to be said about romanticizing your life and there is a fine line between YouTubers that like make vlogs about books that are really beautiful and beautifully done and show you their life and and they're very curated and everything and then there's booktubers that just do videos about the books that they're reading and and their ideas and you know and do check-ins and stuff like that and for a while I wanted to be this youtuber the one excuse me <laughs> the one that curated her book life you know like romanticized her life which i think we should all do by the way i think we should be romanticizing romanticizing our lives a little bit more um but at the moment dealing with um all of the tragedy and sudden deaths in my family i just don't feel like it and i also i never feel like it i don't feel like 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 pretending that i live this life that i don't live like like I, I'll be honest like my bed is actually unmade I just made it enough <laughs> for the video there is a pile of clothes behind me that I had to move you know it's it's the reality of things and I just want to talk about the books that I'm reading so currently I am seven books behind on my Goodreads challenge but that's really good because I was actually 14 books behind so my goal this month is to not get ahead but to like be on par with my goodreads challenge for some people goodreads challenges or book reading challenges in general are not important for me it's a way of keeping me accountable because as much as i love reading i'm very easy to convince to not to read like right now i was just watching videos on, on youtube which there's nothing wrong with that but i want to read like it's it's something that i enjoy it's something about my life that i really enjoy so this intro is long enough i'm going to show you the books that i'm going to be reading this weekend and the first book that i'm going to be reading is um the bone marrow thieves by cherie de, de moline i always say that wrong i'm pretty sure but here's my issue with this book i kind i'm sorry i'm like but my bed's in the way <laughs> i started reading this book and I'm not impressed. I thought this was going to be more sci-fi-ish, but it's not. This book is actually about a world where, as per usual in any sci-fi, we have destroyed the world. And um, there is this thing about dreaming and dreams and how the only people that are able to dream now are Native Americans. In this case, First Nation people because this is Canadian, so I think they prefer the term First Nations. Um, yeah, and the only people that can dream are First Nation people and they're being hunted down and are being, they're being harvested, there we go, they're being harvested for their dreams. So I thought it was going to be more, I don't know, I thought it was going to be different, but it turns out that it's a survival book in the forest, which I guess is fine but it's just not what I was looking forward to like I'm I'm going to try to read this today like I'm gonna try to read this in one day I don't have any more classes today and I'm gonna try to power through it but if I don't finish reading it um I'll let you know the next two books that I'm gonna read I think I'm gonna finish pretty quickly one of them is Ambassador I talked about this already this is about a young boy named Gabe Fuentes, I called him Gabriel Fuentes in the last vid vlog, vlog blah, 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 video. <laughs> I called him Gabe. I called him Gabriel because, you know, Gabe, Gabriel. Um, but anyway, he is, I think him and his entire family are illegal immigrants. And he is the first person to come in contact with an alien species. And he turns out to be the one that has to represent Earth when he himself might be an illegal. I, I have a issue with the term illegal 
immigrant. As Gabe races to save himself and his planet from annihilation, he learns that his undocumented, undocumented, that's a better word, undocumented parents are in danger of being deported. Can he survive long enough to solve two sets of alien problems? I really like that. That's that's quirky and funny. And I saw this and I wish I had bought this before I did my, well, I wish there ha I had done a lot of things before I did my mid-year check-in tag. And that is Low um, by uh, Remender and Tottini. I, I'm so bad, sorry. But um, this is volume one, The Delirium of Hope. And I want you to look at this cover. Look at it, look at it. This is the most beautiful cover that I have ever seen. Those colors just, and, and the illustration style, it's mm, mint. But anyway, I don't really know what this is about. I think, I think this is about how humans destroy Earth. <laughs> Do you see a theme? Uh, but, and they go try to live underwater to escape what they've done to Earth, so. That's what I'm trying to read this weekend, and if I do finish those three, that will put me... I'm currently seven books behind my Goodreads challenge, and that would put me at four books behind, which I think I can read four books in the rest of the month. The only thing that I'm worried about is actually this one, because I really did try to read it, but I, I think I'm going to give it a fair shot now that I know what it's about, instead of like wanting it to be something else. And, well, I'm just gonna go lay on my unmade bed and uh, read and I'll check in with you later when I have anything else to say. Currently, I have nothing else to say. Okay. I've been trying to read this for hours and I just can't do it. I'm, I'm putting it down. I've decided that I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna come back to it later, but I don't wanna read this right now. So I'm just going to put it down. I I couldn't get 10 pages in. I don't know what it is. I, it's not a bad book. It's just that I'm not really interested in the story itself. So why would I keep trying to read this if I'm not into it? So yeah, I feel bad because I really wanted to like this book. But I just, you know, sometimes some books work out and sometimes some books don't work out and this was the case where it just hasn't worked out for me. So I'm gonna pick up another book. I'm not sure which one yet. I might just read Ambassador and, um, excuse me, The Monsters of Cedar Street, which were the other two books that I was gonna read and also Low. So that's my plan now. I'm just gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go for now because I've been trying to read it for months and this is the book that really put me I'm sorry there's cat hair everywhere but it's the book that really put me into a reading slump so why do I keep trying to read it it just makes no sense so I'm just not gonna do that I'm not we're not gonna force ourselves to read just because okay also I think is this no I was gonna say I think this is my other cat <laughs> so I'm looking at it in the viewfinder but it's not so yeah, this is officially going back in the in my shelves, maybe to be read one day, we'll see. Good morning everyone, it's the next day, so it's Saturday, and I didn't update you yesterday because I'm going to be honest, yesterday was therapy day for me, and therapy day is always a really hard day, and between that and DNFing uh, the, mar the Marrow Thieves, I just wasn't feeling up to it, but I did finish a book yesterday, and that was Ambassador by William Alexander. This book is really, really on the low end of middle grade. It's an enjoyable book, it's just not my kind of book, because although I do like middle grade, I do not like like the lower end of middle grade, and it just didn't have enough substance for me. The characters weren't fleshed out enough. I I didn't really enjoy it as much as I thought. There's nothing inherently wrong with the book. It's just that for me, it wasn't as much of a pleasant experience as I was expecting it to be. My plan for the weekend hasn't changed. I'm still gonna try to read low. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll over the books from like the books that I was planning to read next week. So I'm gonna read The Monsters of Cedar Street, The Magnificent Monsters of Cedar Street, 
and that's gonna be it for this weekend so I am going I finished this today I gave it a four star but it was more like a 3.5 I just I, I think had this been a little bit on the like higher end of middle grade had the characters been a little bit more fleshed out had the story itself been a little bit more fleshed out I would really like have enjoyed it there's there's a lot going on here like Gabe is taken into like this um embassy where all the worlds meet and the way you do things is you play games with each other so like if you want to talk politics because they're a bunch of kids what they do is play games and the reason that they give for them being a bunch of kids is actually really interesting i like i really enjoyed that it was because if you bring a kitten and a puppy together when they're young the most like like the the likelihood that they will get along is much higher than if you bring a, an adult dog and an adult kitten because they already are set in their ways so that's why they pick children to be ambassadors and then there's this like um oh i forgot what it's called the the outlast the outlast the outlast is this world that basically eats worlds and they do have an ambassador because everyone here has an ambassador and i really like that character i just wish there had been more of this book that's it like give me more and i would have been really happy with it so i think i'm just gonna give it it 3.5 stars i this is a series actually i might pick up the next one in the series which is called nomad because this one leaves on quite a cliffhanger so i think that i might pick that up and well then i have low here i tried to read it yesterday but i just wasn't in the mood the illustrations the coloring is absolutely gorgeous look at this page it's all like these like like greenish bluish just murkiness and then the next page it's all reds and oranges and yellows and i just really think that this was colorized expertly amazingly um not a big fan of the way women are represented here but then again you know it's a comic book I, I i have too much high expectations sometimes but um yeah overall i have no idea what this is about i already told you what i think it's about yeah for the weekend i'm gonna read low uh right now i'm actually getting ready to go have breakfast with my husband at our favorite spot in town and then after that i'm just gonna come home and read I'm pretty sure I'm going to finish these two books on Saturday because what else do I have to do? I don't have anything else to do. Well, watch YouTube. I've been watching a lot of uh, booktube lately, which has been taking up a lot of my time. But I really want to get into the swing of things. Also, Sunday I it's my filming day, so I have videos prepared and filmed. Let me know what you think about this location. I actually really like this location. I like the way the light, it's natural light, is hitting. Yeah. That's it. So I'll let you know how it goes with low, and I'll see you when I see you. All right. So I'm back. I'm here with another update um, in the same exact spot, but it's been hours. It's literally, I don't know, it's like 6 p.m. or something. But I've been reading, finally, because I haven't read all day, because I really haven't felt like it, and, you know, that's okay. Sometimes you don't feel like reading. But I've been reading low by Remender and Tokini and Tini Tokini and I'll say the drawings the illustrations not drawings this is just a thing for your face that I'm using as a bookmark well the illustrations are really confusing like I have no idea what's happening in like most panels like I really have no idea what's happening this story is interesting however i will say that it's like trigger warning for everything you can think of anything you can think of it's a trigger warning here it's it's really intense it's really out there and honestly i'm not i'm not really liking it i'm halfway through i'm gonna finish it today but I just think that it's a little bit too much for me. I thought it was going to be... Again, I keep thinking that all of these reading, Like, all these readings? What? All of these reads that I have are going to be whimsical and fun. And they just turn out to be 
aggressive and I don't know like intense I guess that's the word that I would use they're really intense so um, I'm gonna finish this first volume but I doubt that I'll continue with the rest of them I don't know I just feel that because of everything going on in my personal life I really want something light and nice or fun and and, and and sweet like the first books that I read in the month and now I'm reading books that are more intense um so that's pretty much it for the update on this one after I finish this I'm gonna try to get to the monsters of the magnificent monsters of Cedar Street which is thankfully more whimsical and sweet and gentle and it not like tearing my heart out through like my chest because this this starts off pretty strong also like I said sex violence just a lot of things a lot of things I don't even want to say them because they're like like they're so intense so yeah I'm gonna continue reading it I'm pro I probably have another half an hour to go and then I'll finish this one um that's it that's all I got for you uh I wish I was enjoying this more. The cover is still amazing, but it's too graphic. And I'm not somebody that's like often put off by like things being graphic or anything like that, but this is just too graphic. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Okay, so I'm done reading low. I'm not going to try to say the names of the authors again. Um, I give it three stars. I just found that this was very um, hopeless, like all of everything that was happening was really tough and difficult to listen, not to listen to, <laughs> difficult to read. I found the illustrations very difficult to follow. Um, the, the coloring is beautiful, but it's a very sad story and I really just, I don't want to read a sad story right now. So. I mean, I would still recommend it, again, if you're over 18, not if you're under 18, definitely, because this is just for, this is definitely an adult content graphic novel, but it was just confusing, and it, it, I, I don't know if I, it, it's a story about where, again, humanity has destroyed the earth and we have somehow gone under water and we live under water but we're running out of oxygen and then there's this religion and 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 somebody gets kidnapped and and it's it's a little i don't know it's it's a little too much it's a little too much honestly um it also is kind of like derivative of other works that i've read or, or seen, you know, it's it's kind of repetitive in the whole kidnapping and hope and the father and the mother and the, and the brother and the sisters and it, and the hope being the thing. It it, it almost like it, it kind of reminds me like a really dark version of Star Wars underwater. I gave it three stars. Still love the cover. Not gonna continue on with the series. And now I finally get to read something that is much more up my alley, which is. The Magnificent Monsters of Cedar Street. So I am about 20% into this. I'm really enjoying it. I am, you have no idea how relieved I am to get to this book. I have been enjoying this more, like not filming my daily life, but just sitting down in different positions in my bed. <laughs> that sounded weird. But just sitting down and, and, and telling you about the books I'm reading. Um, so far in this book, we have... The main character whose name is Cordelia, which name, that's a name I love. I wish I could like use it for a child if I had children, but it doesn't sound right in Spanish. It sounds like rope. But anyway, um, Cordelia it helps her father out with the monsters so far, and she loves her father. She loves his job. She loves monsters. And right now she is being... The, pro the problem is that her father is also a normal veterinarian because, you know, he can't... In, the, in this world, monsters are real, but not a lot of people know about them. So, um, he, her father has a normal veterinarian practice, but now they're starting to not have customers because monsters keep weird times and they have to keep the monsters hidden. 
So right now, there's a boy that comes to Cordelia and he has a zuppy, which is a zombie puppy. And that's where I'm at right now. And apparently her father goes missing at some point and it's kind of like a, you know, who done it? What happened? Where did he go? And I can't wait to read this. So I'm gonna try to read this between today and tomorrow or something like that. Anyway, um, I'm gonna get to reading this. I might not update you today because Rodrigo and I are going out for drinks tonight. We never go out for drinks because I don't really drink alcohol, but I've been wanting a mojito lately and you know, it's 39 degrees out. <laughs> and I, that's around 100 degrees for people that are in the US. So we were just like, we should just go out tonight and have mojitos just the two of us so yeah I'll catch you when I have anything to update you on I know I said I'd not update you until later but you know I've been reading so I am about 60% into this book and I gotta say this was exactly what I needed it's cute it's whimsical it's sweet it's nice it's just like it's such a nice palette cleanser from everything I've been reading and I was looking through my um, my, my spreadsheet of the books that I have coming up and I kind of rearranged some things to make them not be so intense you know there's my you haven't seen my cats in a while but anyway to make them not be so intense altogether because I don't mind reading adult books with in what do i keep saying intense with like difficult i don't know plots or not plots but like difficult or hard things to deal with like i don't mind that it's just that right now i'm going through stuff and i don't want to read that back to back to back to back to back which was kind of what was happening a little bit and i saw that um, coming up, I have like a bunch of adult, I don't know how to explain it, but adult difficult books, I guess, um, you know. So, um, I really needed this. If so far, it's, the writing is really cute, everything about it is really sweet. This reminds me a lot of, oh, the one that Hugo Cabret cabaret book is that is that it i'll insert a picture here but it, it reminds me a lot of that in a way it's really it's about it's, it's an adventure story it has monsters it has an amazing spunky little protagonist it's sweet um it's still early i still could finish this today i probably am gonna finish it today because you know competitiveness and i just want to see that number go down on goodreads like you're only so many books behind and after this i think i've decided what i'm gonna read because i only updated you up to this one so but we'll see i'll let you know later just know that i'm loving this it's really cute really sweet and if you want a nice kind of whimsical gentle book um this is a great book to get people out of like reading slumps and things like that because it just it's just a lot of fun also i've been looking at the viewfinder the whole time because i'm scared of flashing you because the boobies they're like everywhere right now <laughs> all right i'll talk to you guys later hi there so i didn't update you while i was reading the novella articulated restrain because I actually read it while I was at work. Now, this novella actually takes place during the book, The Calculating Stars. Um, here's a picture, I don't remember the author. I really liked the novella. I really liked how it talked about how women have to work extra hard and how we have to be better than men at everything we do simply because we're women. I love how the sexism of it was treated. I didn't like so much the scientific jargon going on in the in the in the novella, but I actually really enjoyed it. I get, I think I gave it four stars, and yeah, I it it ignited my interest in reading the calculating stars. I might pick that up. I might pick that up because 
like I said, this novella, it's only 25 pages, so really, apparently, this is something, like, it's mentioned, th what happens here is mentioned in the Calculating Stars, but it's, like, here it's, like, the whole story, like, this is just something, a, a sentence in the book, and then, so you don't have to read the book to know about this, you know, you don't have, you don't have to, you don't have to read that book to know this. I really liked it, I liked the writing, it was a really fast read that I read during work and yeah so that means I'm officially only five books behind on my Goodreads um, challenge I am still working on this I'm probably gonna finish it tonight but I won't update you until later because you know I'm trying I, I was trying to keep it like I was trying to keep this <laughs> like what do you call that organized but I, I apparently can't do that so <laughs> I'm still reading this oh and I also started reading um the sleeping brain I think it's called is that what it's called again it's here I'm 20% into that so overall I think we're gonna do well with this goodreads reading challenge thing my bob that I'm doing and yeah with the with the um the sleeping brain or the nocturnal brain i'm really enjoying it you guys i have i my love for what is it called my love for non-fiction is reignited through this book i love reading non-fiction i especially love reading scientific sort of things in non-fiction I'm not a very, I'm not a person that is really into bio, biographies and things like that. But definitely reading about these sorts of things like sleeping disorders or I love to read, oh that has a name, but animal behavior and stuff like that. I really enjoy it. So far there's a lot of scientific stuff that of course I don't understand in this book. But I think the author does a really good job of telling you the scientific things and then explaining it better to you. So yeah, I'm balancing two books at the moment. Yeah, I'm balancing this one and the um, the nocturnal brain and I feel it finished articulate, articulated restraint. So definitely recommend you read articulated restraint and um, let's see how the rest of the week goes and if I can catch up to that elusive Goodreads goal. So I actually haven't updated you in a while as to what I've been reading, but I can say that I finished um, the Brain book. <laughs> That's what I'm calling it. I don't, I don't, I never know the name. It's the Sleeping Brain. I don't remember. But anyway, I finished it. Here are my thoughts on it. It was a good book. I, in the beginning, I was really excited to get back into nonfiction and to enjoy a nonfiction book again because I haven't read nonfiction in a really long time. But, but, the problem with it was that I felt that it dragged on and I thought that the, I'm sorry if you can hear airplanes. <laughs> oh, it's never a good time to film. So I thought the scientific stuff like explaining the 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 like the, the scientific naming of it all while interesting i feel took away a lot from the book i also kind of have to admit that the chapter that was dedicated to my particular sleeping disorder was the like least interesting chapter and i was kind of looking forward to that so i gave this book four stars now at this point i think i'm five books behind on my goodreads challenge i think i don't know i have to check but um i will update you with my next read which i believe let me check my next read is the final six by alexandra moner now moner monier i'm sorry um this is but this is a sci-fi and it was written by an Iranian, is that how you say that? Ira Iranian? I don't know how to say that, I'm so sorry. American author. And it's about a group of teenagers that, okay, so we destroyed the earth. 
<laughs> like we tend to do in science fiction and we decide that okay so everything is being flooded they're like super storms it's a little bit like a you know blockbuster from the u.s and we decide that we have to spend teenagers because it's always got to be teenagers i'm just gonna age up the characters in this book in my head to be like 24 but whatever so we have to send teenagers up to Europa, which is one of the moons of Saturn, in order to colonize it and then, you know, be able to send more people there. That's the gist of it. I am really excited for it. It's really short and I've seen nothing but good things. And if you're wondering why I bought this, it was because it was really discounted <laughs> on the Amazon. So I was like, I like the cover, you know, and I have the audiobook. So I, if I don't I don't have to crack this open if I don't like it I can return it which I don't think is as disingenuous because if I haven't opened it like I haven't touched it then I think that I can return it and it will not do anything in my you know won't be a problem so this is the next book I'm reading finished the nocturnal brain it's what is it called the nocturnal brain nightmares neuroscience and the secret world of sleep that's what it's called. This this lighting is horrible. Everything is horrible. I look a hot mess because I'm tired. So I will update you when I have anything to say about this book. Hey y'all. I'm sitting here um, getting ready for work. I'm actually cooking my lunch as we speak. And I just want to say that I finished the monsters, the Magnificent Monsters of Cedar Street by Lauren Oliver. This book was, it was just okay. It wasn't revolutionary. It wasn't anything crazy. I kept thinking like, I, I wanna read this book, but, and it was cute and it was sweet, but at the same time, I just don't think that I was in the mood for it. The characters were okay. It was a little bit cliche. Like everything was a little bit cliche. I think that that's my problem, that things were a little bit cliche. Um, there was a part in the beginning where they explained different kinds of monsters and But it doesn't have illustrations I wish it did have illustrations because the illustrations in the cover are just amazing and I think the little like um, Encyclopedia of monsters like they have in the beginning, but with illustrations would have made it better. I think this this I mean it's it's for kids so things get solved really quickly but I just don't think that all books for kids have to be like that. I think sometimes we can appreciate a child's intelligence and not make it so obvious. So this got a 3.5 4 stars from me and yeah that's another book down for this book challenge. This video is gonna be super long. Hey there! I know I know I still look like I need a nap. That's probably because I need a nap and I'm not wearing any makeup. And I was just about to take a nap, but I thought I should update people on The Final Six by Alexandra Moner. Now, um, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit into this book. The premise is again, destroy the world. It's very like climate change y, you know? And there is this group of teens that get chosen because of course they're a group of teens. I don't I don't know why it's a group of teens. I think it's because women authors get pushed to making their MCs teens so their books will sell more but whatever they're teens and I just have to say something really funny the, there's the whole idea is that they're getting people from all over the world so that's pretty cool because we get to see like people from China and Russia and Pakistan and Indonesia and you know many different places I, I know there's more places, just bear with me. It's really hot and I need a nap. <laughs> so, um, there, the main, one of the main characters, one of the main points of view is a guy from <laughs> Italy. And his name, it's like, it's like Alexandre Monero was like, what's the most Italian name I can think of? It, aside from Leonardo da Vinci. And she was like, his name is Leonardo Daniele. And I just find that hilarious. I'm sorry, you gotta find that funny. His name is Leonardo Daniele. <laughs> well, so far, he has tried to off himself, but of course, because he's a main POV, he just doesn't. And for some reason, he's friends with the prime minister's daughter or her, 
I think he's rich. Like he, well, he used to be rich because now like his whole family is dead. It's a, that's fine. It's not a spoiler. It's literally in the first chapter. So yeah, so far it's really tropey and it's really 2006-ish dystopia. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I have high hopes for this because it has a good rating on Goodreads. Like it has the rating on Goodreads, which it, where it's, it's like my my what's that called? Soft spot. My like yeah, my main like books that have this rating are books that I usually like. And it's like a three point eight because like if it, that's a pretty high rating. I don't know. It's it it sounds good, and I'm still and I'm interested in the story, and I really like that the main character is an Iranian or Iranian. I, I think it's Iranian because Iranian sounds like you're from Uranus, but Iranian because it's Iran. So she's an Iranian American second generation, and I think that that's pretty cool. But I mean, also, we're really clear from like first three chapters that these two are gonna get together. Like, there's no doubt, no doubt, like they're gonna get together. So, yeah. That's my update for now, and if you're wondering why I'm filming here in front of my bookshelves, it's because my whole house is a mess and I don't feel like cleaning it. I'm just gonna go take a nap, and I'm gonna listen to this while like while I'm falling asleep. So I'll wake up eventually and uh, still look like crap, but I'll tell you how much I listened to it and if I liked it or not. I finished this, and I gave it five out of five stars. This story gets so good, you know, it, it does read a little YA-ish because it is YA, so you know, why not? But I actually really, really love this and it has a twist that I wasn't expecting and I don't know, it was so good. Of course, it's a little, I don't know, I don't want to like defend it, but it's just, it's really good. I don't know how to explain it. I really like the romance in it. In the beginning, I thought it was going to be a little bit insta-lovey, but it actually takes a while for it to like develop and I don't know just the idea of going to space and everything and uh, I just loved it and adding to that so I actually was not tired last night as you can see I did do my hair mask and I look a little bit rough and the lighting is kind of nice but you know anyway so yeah this is the next day <laughs> from the last clip that you saw and I right away started a new book and I didn't even update you because I just really wasn't feeling like it at the time but I started the sequel to this book which is um, here here's a little image and I have to say I finished it because it was really fast it was actually shorter than this one and I finished it so I have to say that I liked it, but I didn't love it as much as this one. And I thought like, okay, well, this is second book syndrome, but I found out that it's a duology and I have so many questions left unanswered, but I really enjoyed the characters and I really enjoyed the story. So I recommend that you pick up The Final Six and The Life Below by Alexandra Moner. Let's see if she gets, uh, she gives us another book in the series because I really, there are so many questions that I have, like... Things are left, but I don't mind that so much anymore. Like I used to, like, I don't know. I, I remember with Horrid, I think that book kind of taught me not to expect all the answers in one book. So, um, yeah, I really liked it. And this officially means that I am two books away from my, what's it called? My Goodreads challenge goal, which is to be on schedule it's not anything else than to be on schedule um this has actually taken me two weeks to film i know for you it's, it hasn't been two weeks but for me it's been two weeks so i actually have to read one more book than i originally planned because of course you know i went over a week so that but i am planning on reading finally finally the galaxy and the ground within by becky chambers i'm gonna finish this book today there's no doubt about it. And if you're wondering if this is the same shirt as yesterday, no. I have two exactly the same. I promise you I do. Uh, <laughs> I just, they're so comfortable. They're like this organic cotton um, oversized 
t-shirt dress from the weekend that I got from ASOS so in case you're wondering and it's basically all I wear I wear this one and the blue one I actually change shirts just to film videos but I didn't feel like it today I kind of have a migraine but I know that I'm gonna finish um, the galaxy on the ground within because it's Becky Chambers I love her so that's my next book. I don't have it in physical. I only have it in audio because I'm waiting for that cover because I want it to match my other covers. I don't want it to not match. So I'm waiting for that other cover to come out, which comes out in November. So I'll have it physically in November. But for now, I'm just going to listen to the audiobook. Either way, I, I listen to most of my books on audio. So yeah, that's my update. I can't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm thinking about scrapping this video simply because this video has been a mess <laughs> like it's so many clips and I just think that editing this is gonna hurt my brain but we'll see I'm, I'm determined I'm determined and I really want to get this done so yeah so if I finish the galaxy and the ground within today today is Thursday if I finish that today I will be I will have three days to finish one more book and that's it and that's all the books that I'm gonna be reading and I'm gonna like do a little wrap-up at the end I don't even remember when I started this like I don't remember what books I read but just know that I am this close to that Goodreads challenge but right now I'm gonna take a nap okay I'm gonna listen to the galaxy and the ground within and I'm gonna take a nap well I did it <laughs> I got up to date with my Goodreads challenge and I didn't record any of it. Honestly, the reason I didn't record any of it was because last clip you saw of me with the bun and the bed and everything was on Thursday afternoon. So I started reading The Galaxy and the Ground Within by Becky Chambers and I just got sucked in. Oh my gosh, I was like, oh, I, you know, it's the typical Becky Chambers thing for me where I, in the beginning, I'll be honest, this is the only book that doesn't feature a human character at all in the story. So I was not feeling it so much. I was like, hmm, I'm not sure I like these characters. I wonder if it's because there was no human in the bunch. But anyway, in the end, by, by the end of it, I was crying. It was like a whole mess. And I really loved it. And of course, um, actually this, this is funny because this would have been in my five star predictions if I didn't, if I, if I had the physical copy. But because I didn't have the physical copy, I didn't include it in my five star predictions. But it was five stars, loved it, would read it again, and I'm getting it as soon as that fabulous cover comes out. Now the day after that, which was Friday, which was two days ago <laughs> the, the, yeah it was two days ago friday i was like okay girl you have to read one more book so i had started looking through script because let me know if you want to see my script library or like for me to do like a script tbr because i have a hefty number of books saved on there to listen to because like i said i consume most of my books through audiobooks so I was looking through the library and I saw this book called Orbiting Jupiter. I have it right here actually. I saw Orbiting Jupiter on there. Now of course this is a spoiler because you know that I wouldn't have bought this if I didn't love it. But um, I didn't know what it was about and then I checked the Goodreads page for it. And Books and Lala gave this 4 star. A bunch of people, I think Reagan gave it 5 stars. Like it. It was it is well loved it's got a really high average rating and I was like you know what I'm going for it it the book is only a three hour long book and I listen at 2.5 so that would be like an hour and a half or something like that and I was I was ready to listen to it like take a nap so I was it, this was Saturday and I was like okay I'm ready to listen to this after my nap is over I, not after my nap is over. It's like I'll listen to this drift off nap and then I'll pick it up Didn't happen listen to it from beginning to end and it was Amazing I fucking loved it. It was so the, hey, Let me give out the trigger warnings. It's 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 a lot. It's a lot. It's about a boy I didn't even say what this was about. It was it's about a, a 14 year old boy 
who is a father and who is in the foster care system and who meets his foster brother Jack whom he calls Jackie and it's about their story and, and how they form a friendship, a bond and it's so, it, it packs such a punch, it's so beautiful and it took me to my Goodreads goal. So we are officially at my goal. I am all up to date on Goodreads and that makes me so relaxed and happy. Like I said, I know being up to date on Goodreads is nothing like out of this world or it's nothing that you know you should fight for if you're not. But for me, it's just one of those things to keep me accountable for reading. And I know that I shouldn't be kept accountable for reading because it's my hobby, but I like it. I, it it's, it's a good way to push me out of my comfort zone. Like, I would have never read this. I would have never read this, and I probably would have never read this if it wasn't for this whole challenge thing of getting up to date. Now, I will say, what? oh my gosh, now what is my favorite book that I read the past couple of weeks to get up to date. Let me see. I'm gonna go with Orbiting Jupiter by Gary D. Schmidt. The book that I've been thinking about the most, it's also the most recent, it's gotta be um, Orbiting Jupiter by Gary D. Schmidt. I loved it. Now the worst book that I read to get me through this challenge is The Monsters, The Magnificent Monsters of Cedar Street. There's nothing wrong with this book. I gave this book like a three and a half, four stars. But I just didn't connect with it that much. So it's not like my best read of the year. And when you compare it to other books that I've read this month or this, this even these two weeks, it just doesn't stack up. I wasn't expecting it. I thought this was, was going to be one of my favorites. But it just isn't. It's, it, it kind of fell a little bit flat for me. But I still urge you to pick it up if you want to read a nice, fun middle grade. It's just that it, it didn't... It didn't do it for me. That's it. That is this challenge completed. I'm sorry if the footage is boring. I'm sorry <laughs> that I didn't vlog every day. It's kind of hard when I'm at work like 12 hours because sometimes I finish two books when I'm at work because sometimes my students are doing tests and things like that and I just bang them out. So I guess now the challenge is to keep up to date with the books that um, I'm supposed to be reading in order to reach, I put it at a 52 this year because the first half of the year I only read 14 books so I just put it at 52. So I hope you enjoyed this long video format. I know that a lot of you are going to be like, no, -uh, I'm not going to watch that, but that's okay. I enjoyed making it kind of, sort of. I. I I did feel a little bit like I was a bit disorganized with it. I think I have to be more organized to make videos like this. But if you like this, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, please subscribe. And I will see you all in another galaxy far, far away. Bye. It's a miracle that this didn't fall down.